found the shit again. A whole hell of a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, I think we're near the target. Since I said the flak strength was gonna be high. And here's where I'm going to use the old term, Bohica, which stands for bend over, here it comes again, because this is gonna be bad. So far, knock on wood, nobody in our tail section has called out. We're low enough that we don't need oxygen masks right now. Um, I would still be wearing mine if I were a meal, uh, just so I could get the oxygen to reduce the nausea I would be feeling from the sheer terror. This is, uh, this is bad. Watch up here on the flight deck. Oh goodness, that was loud, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like uh, we fought off the fighters, but uh, as you can see, we're now dealing with this. We're at our bombing altitude, so I'm hoping we find our decision point and start the bomb run very, very soon. Um, I wonder if I can get... Oh, goodness. I wonder if I can get killed. Garcia got hit in the radio room. It's everywhere. Before you pass out, Garcia, hang in there, buddy. I need to know the primary target's weather report. Okay. Great. That's good news. If we can make it to the bomb site without getting destroyed in the air, uh, the weather shouldn't be too much of an issue, it sounds like. However, I don't know if we're going to survive that far in. still letting the computer control it. So I guess we'll find out. Now we'll be back if we ever find that bomb run or we're going down in flames towards the German countryside. Ah, oh, Jesus. Alright. Looks like the bombardier is preparing for the bomb run, so we may actually have found the target or be close to it. Doesn't look like the computer's locked on yet. It's a weird phrase to say, playing a game that takes place in World War II. The computer hasn't locked on yet. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. So he's, he's just... Assuming. <laughs> we 
We're at our initial point. We're going to try to make a heavy turn. We're over a large area of factories, it looks like. Or a city? I'm not sure what that is down there. There's one hell of an area, though. There's the port. Yeah, that's got to be Bremen Port. Alright, so the bombardier has the plane. Bomb doors are open, and we're going to make a turn towards our target. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in for the uh, bombardier here. Start making wind adjustments and everything else, and it looks like we have fantastic, fantastic weather for this. This is good. This is very, very good. Just for wind. Very carefully here. Um, really? It looks like we're on target, buddy. I think you're doing your job. Don't freak out. Unless we're just bombing some random factory. The, uh, the, the good news is, is that uh, it's a factory, so it's got to be hurting production of somebody. Hopefully it's Germany. Uh, turns out we bombed France. That'd be my luck, wouldn't it? I'm surprised Flack is so docile right now. And it looks like those are hangars where they could store finished fighter planes, so... almost said fighter jets. I think I've been playing strike fighters a little bit. <laughs> so I'm hoping to take out the hangars where the finished planes are. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I should go more this direction, near the rail yard take out what might be the actual production facility. I don't know, I think I'm just going to aim smack dab in the middle, try to get as many finished planes as I can, and whatever those buildings are, slightly to the left of my center crosshair line, because those look like they might be production plant as well. I'm doing a lot of wind corrections here. Hopefully they're going to be accurate and true and not all for naught, so... Come on and hit the factory. This is good weather, low flak. We're at a good altitude, I hope. Should make us fairly accurate. I don't imagine how this could really go too much worse. I mean, there's no way it could be better. Excellent clear view of the bomb area. I could never be so lucky. Go ahead and drop the bombs. Bombs away. Alright. Come on and hit true, bombs. Hit true. Hopefully we should make our climb very soon. Actually we'll have a rally point turn, but hoping. Our bombs should follow our shadows and just annihilate this area so we didn't lose planes for nothing. Come on. Yes! Good hits. Finally. <laughs> that put quite a dent in whatever factory this is. Hopefully it was the correct one. Alright, let's get back to our plane see how everybody's doing. Any medical call-outs? No, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our tail gunner, who has taken flak and fighter rounds, which probably means... God, we're so lucky that ammo didn't cook off. I don't know if ammo can cook off in the game, but every time I look at that, I mean, just... Uh, the, the, that's horrifying. That's live 50 caliber rounds, and there's several holes through it. That's never a good thing. So... Now at this point it's just going to be making our rally turn. Uh, looks like we're lucky enough that uh, we hurt the factory quite well and we're not under a lot of flak fire. Uh, this guy makes me nervous. 
If this plane is shot up as it is, I don't know what level of control he has it under, so when we start to make our turn towards the rally point, he might collide with us. But I'll be back with the recording when that starts to happen, so I'll see you guys then. Alright, I did a bit of a time skip and it looks like it missed our rally point turn, so in a way I kind of just like god moded us not to get hurt. Uh, and we're making our climb back up to our cruise altitude to head home to England. Um, hopefully the navigator won't get lost. As you can see, still see, there is a really tough Thunder Jug flying right above us. The P-47 Thunderbolt still going with no external drop tanks. I don't know how that guy expects to go home, but that is one dedicated pilot. I want him to get a lot of medals. <laughs> I think he's the only one to have survived the fighter assault and, of course, my own inability to recognize friendlies, and I shot down one. <coughs> cough, cough, I'm sure I will get a great medal for that. <laughs> so anyway, I'll be back when we start making our landings at England, hopefully, or, of course, if there's a problem before then. So, see you guys around. Okay, somebody just passed out. Uh, it doesn't look like our pilots. If our pilots went down, you would see uh, they wouldn't be at their position, and the plane would look empty, and that's always frightening. Um, I don't know who made a call out. It's actually Tony Sharbanu. Sharbanu. So our navigator is down, and it looks like Edwin Frame, our bombardier, is attempting to do his job. So uh, that's not going to work. We're going to get lost, and now is not the time to get lost. We're shot up. A lot of men are hurt, and it sounds like we are under flak attack. So this needs to change. I'm sending the tail gunner all the way from his position, way back the plane, all the way to the front. Um, it's going to take him a long time to get there, but we need to get our navigator back on his feet. Whatever happens to be wrong with Tony. I've already left the tail. Come on, Emil, come on. Get up there. The radio room. Who's providing... Yeah, I'm working on my way up there, Bill. Uh, not Bill. Tony, sorry. Okay, it looks like our top turret gunner left his position to go operate the chin turret. Should be there. Yeah, there I am. said there's a lot of blood. That's not good. So I'm just going to wave my hand in front of his face be like, how many fingers am I holding up? Yeah, you're fine. You know, instead of like, I don't know, maybe tying off the wound or something. But it looks like we survived the flak somehow. We're still in a climb. We've got oxygen on. We probably had it on around 15,000 feet, I believe, is when uh, they don oxygen masks. So, bump my mic again. You guys are welcome for that from me to you. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Alright, come on, Tony. We need you to do your job, man. We're almost home. We just need you to get home. <laughs> and get us home. Good man. He's got shrapnel in him. He's bleeding out all over the place. But he's like, let's get back to work. Wish I was that tough. Robert, you need to go back. Oh, right. I'm cheating. I can't do that. I said I would not control anybody but the bombardier. Oh. So here's the loophole. Edwin is our bombardier who also controls the chin turret. So I'll tell him to go back to the chin turret and kick Robert Garcia out of the way. Haha. -ha. Look at that. Loopholes in my own rules, everyone. Enjoy. Then I'll go back to the tail compartment and select Emil there because he is the tail gunner that I can also control. So anyways, there was a slight medical emergency. Tony might go down again, uh, depending on the severity of his wound and how well Emil was able to patch him up. I don't think Emil has the best medical skills, but uh, this isn't a good thing because we're probably almost low on fuel. Uh, we're quite shot up. There are people hurt in the formation. There's other planes that are struggling to even be in the air right now. We can't afford to have our navigator keep getting lost or passing out from wounds. So. I'll be back if we ever make it back across the channel and into England. Okay, it sounds like we have another medical emergency aboard. We're making our descent, and it looks like, yeah, Bill E. <laughs> has gone down in his radio room. 
No, he's in the nose. Oh goodness, where is Bill? That's that's really not good. We can't find Bill right now. Uh really, really, really not good. Oh, I bet he's in the yeah, okay, great. Bill passed out in the top turret position for some reason. So I'm actually going to send Emil again, because he's one of the other characters I can control. Actually, shit. If I did the whole switchy-roo thing with Edwin, I should have sent Edwin to try to fix him. It's probably too late now. Great. I'm sending a guy that's going to take forever to get to poor, to poor Bill. I'm sorry, Bill. Hang in there, man. We're making our descent home. You're going to be home soon. We are actually at 17,000 feet. Uh, there is the English coast above us. We're right above the middle of the channel, it looks like. So, we're hopefully going to be there soon. This is going to be one hell of a mission um, in terms of video length. So, I'm hoping I can split it up for us here. I'm not sure. unsettling when you hear a guy screaming he's not ready to die, he has things to do. Um, and, the, and this is just a video game. I mean, it is just a fun little computer game. Thing is, is, people really did this, and there are still people doing this right now. Maybe not in, in this kind of degree, but I mean, there are crews and, and military men and women putting themselves at risk daily in, in some areas of the world. Uh, it's just sad to think that th this kind of terror and stuff can be inflicted upon humans by other humans and experienced by humans. So, that's, that's the kind of stuff I think about. Don't I make computer games not fun anymore? <laughs> oh my goodness. But just the uh, the generation that did this, you know, you know hats off to them. Because I know personally, I don't have the cojones to do this. <laughs> I, I never will. And it's good that Emil actually got Bill E. back together. I should have sent uh, Edwin to try to work on him, though. So, and it looks like uh, Sean was uh, I either unsettled by the fact that Billy went down, or he himself is really starting to hurt. And I can't imagine why, if you follow my mouse cursor. <laughs> so that's never good. But it looks like everything's back together. Uh, people aren't bleeding all over the deck of the plane anymore. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the recording. And hopefully we'll make our uh, landing at Thurlay very soon. Because we're already descending and we're three quarters of the way across the channel, I'd say. So, I'll be back. Alright, we just got told to orbit and wait for landing clearance. It looks like because we're the lead plane and we were the first in the air circling with wounded, they're giving us priority to land. So, we're going to go ahead and make our descent and turn towards Thurlay. And I'll be back when we're on final. And we have a major problem. As you can see, we have a prop just windmilling because it looks like the uh, number two outboard engine has quit. And our other three engines are smoking. And I can't imagine why. I'd never noticed this before. I should have took a better look at the plane during the middle of the mission. But it looks like we've got quite a lot of damage to them. Um, the pilot is a good pilot, though, it seems, because it looks like he's feathered the prop and has the cow flaps open, hopefully to... Uh, Actually, opening the cow... Well, no, it's not flamed out. If it was flamed out, opening the cow flaps would just give the fire oxygen, and that would be terrible. So, I believe he's doing the correct steps for an engine-out procedure. Uh, I just don't like the black smoke pouring halfway across the sky from our B-17. It is listing, and this is probably going to be a very not easy landing. <laughs> In fact, I might want to try to figure out... Um, thing here about trying to move our ball turret gunner if I can, but I can't quite interfere uh, as per my rules, so I don't know how that's going to work. I would very much like to move David uh, Pavlika up to the front and put him on the cheek gun that's unmanned right now, just to get him out of the ball turret in case we have to make a belly landing, because if we have gear damage, um, considering the engines are damaged, it's likely we have gear damage. 
we might have a hydraulic failure. We won't know until we try to drop the gear to land, so that's uh, something to worry about on the, uh, the uh, Bride of Mars, I think. I forgot what the plane's called. That's not good. <laughs> so I'll be back. Holy shit, I can't believe it, and I hope YouTube co compression doesn't ruin it completely. But if you look over there, our little guy... Oops, wrong formation. Shit. Well, I was hoping that would be him, but our P-47 Thunderbolt, uh, you can maybe barely see him at the tip of my mouse pointer because he's going over trees right now, but he is on final to land at the fighter base near Thurlay, near the bomber base, which we are turning on final with quite a few others, but there's our airfield for the heavies. So, believe it or not, that Thunderbolt made it a thousand miles into Germany, engaged in air-to-air -air combat, dropped its drop tanks before engaging in said air-to-air -air combat, and somehow made it all the way back to Thurlay, Great Britain, and is landing. It looks like he might be... Yeah, he's on the runway now on his landing rollout, so that guy made it. That man needs a very high honor. <laughs> that was one hell of a feat. I didn't think the 47 had the legs to do that. In fact, I thought all escort fighters didn't have the legs to do that except for the 51, the P-51 Mustang, and I'm pretty sure it also needed drop tanks to do that. So at any rate, I'll, I'll be back when we're actually landing this time, I promise. Alright, we're on final. The uh, pilot is juggling the engines and the throttle, not only to deal with the outboard number two engine, but the, uh, or the inboard number two engine, but the, uh, the descent rate as well. So, and the fact that most of his control services look like Swiss cheese. So he is struggling mightily with the plane right now, but I'd say he's doing a damn good job. I just hope the gear and flaps come down soon. Looks like he's activated landing flaps. They're slowly traversing, and they don't seem to actually seem to be quite okay. Um, I'm really hoping he's going to side slip in here. A little, little rudder action to get to the runway. Kind of off the runway. I don't know. I, I'm a pilot myself, and I, I tend to like... Okay, not for real. <laughs> Let me say that right now. That was the worst thing I could say. I, I play too many flight simulators. So I, I tend to backseat drive virtually other planes. <laughs> if you put me in a real plane, I, I, I'd probably throw up and pee on myself. Uh, <laughs> so that being said, I still think we're going to miss the runway horribly. Unless he knows something I don't, but I don't think he's got the proper lineup. So this may be where it ends for the Bride of Mars. He's trying to bank really heavily to make the runway, and now he's going to have to overcorrect the opposite direction. This is going to be a painful landing. And we have a wing strike. We're on one gear. And the other gear. He is off the runway. He pulled us back in, though. And this is how rugged the B-17 is. Despite the wing striking the ground, I don't think it did anything but create some interesting artwork in the field. It sounds like our engines are about to quit on us as well, which might be why he did what he did, but it could be audio glitch. Um, this game does have some bugs with audio once in a while, but uh, at any rate, it looks like we're somewhat safe on the ground. Um, just taxiing across the grass towards our stand, so I'll be back with the mission debriefing. Uh, looks like the Bride of Mars made it back. Alright, mission date. December 10th, 1943, we attacked the Bremen Fockwolf factory. We flew 1,141 miles. We lost zero bombers in our squadron. We shot down six fighters, and we had an estimate of moderate bomb damage. So uh, before we go and take a look at everybody that was killed and hurt, let's, uh, let's take a look at the uh, after-action reconnaissance film. They flew some poor bastard up in a plane with a camera and told him to take pictures of what we destroyed there. And... Uh, yeah, looks like I took out some of the hangars, and I'm hoping those were production facilities. That might be why I only got the moderate rating, and I just destroyed already finished uh, fighters, and they can still produce more. I don't know if the game's that in-depth, but uh, at any rate, that is what I did and how I did it. So, let's see, um, Rhoda Evans from a different plane suffered a fatal wound. 
Ilo, Wilkinson, and Battles all cashed in as well. Papgyrus? Papgyrus, I believe, is our um, uh, top turret gunner. He was unfortunately uh, wounded with a light wound. So was Second Lieutenant Whitfield, which I believe was um, our uh, co-pilot, although he never complained. And Charbonneau, our navigator, got a flesh wound, so he should be back in action quite soon. Um, yeah, we, we heard it just a little bit. Charbonneau got a purple heart, as did Whitfield. Papgyrus, Sheeran, Wilkinson was unfortunately a posthumous award, as was Battles, Rhoda, Aiello, and uh, Evans, Sergeant Evans. That's not good. Does Emil have a brother? That's uh, that's very sad if Emil lost his brother. So let's uh, let's take a look at our uh, crew information file here and see uh, first bomber. Blah blah blah. Yeah, Brett and Mars. Not what I was looking for. Bomber information file. Yeah, I got two of them. That's still not telling me what I'm looking for. Timothy Whitfield is wounded in action. Yeah, blah blah. He's gonna be back in five days. Still not telling me what I'm looking for. I was trying to see. Um, if uh, Evans was uh, wounded, um, the Emil Evans, because it says he Evans had a fatal wound. It could be a different Evans. Let's see if he's related. So let's uh, see if we can find that out and see what our damage looks like. This is going to be a very very long. Yeah. Okay. No, we still have the tail gunner Evans. He's good. So that's strange. Um, oh, I meant to also look at the mechanical file while we're at it. This is a very long video. Um, da -da -da -da, it's still got a mechanical status of A, so it just had a couple of pinholes here and there. I think our crew got it worse than the actual plane did. So, at any rate, this has been another episode of Let's Play B-17 Flying Fortress, The Mighty Eighth, with Zombly. I thank you guys very much for watching. I'm sorry it was just a few days over a week mark since uh, the last episode. Um, I s still have stuff going on and whatnot. Um, I, I had the time off, though, so I figured I should get you guys a Let's Play. So I'm going to get this edited, uploaded, and uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you around.